Hello Leo, welcome to my channel. This is Victoria at Radiant Moon Tarot and we're here doing your weekly reading for November 15th through 21st, 2021. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm very grateful for each and every one of you. So just a reminder, these are general readings, not one-on-one, -on -one, so not everything will always resonate. Take what does, leave the rest behind. Also, if you do enjoy my readings, please don't forget to hit the like button on this uh, on this video and also subscribe to my channel. All right, so we've got first out for you, we've got June Journey by Moonlight. Believe in the magic. This is wonderful. You have incredible powers of manifestation right now. All right, you have the power to attract all of the right people, the right situations, the right opportunities into your life. And, you know, it's very uh, actually interesting that this is one of the moon cards out of this deck. All right, because we actually do have a lunar eclipse on the 19th, and this is in Taurus. So this is all about our material world, our material possessions, how you make money, all right, attracting the right things into your life. Some people are looking to make some change with it being the eclipse. Uh, the eclipse brings in revelations, endings, twists of fate, maybe some surprises along the way. So believe in the magic, okay? You have the power to, um, you know, attract anything into your life, okay? But that magic resides within you, all right? And it also resides in the uh, elemental realm as well, all right? There's a lot of help, a lot of spiritual guidance that surround you, okay? To make improvements, to let things go, set intentions, okay? Whatever that happens to be for you, believe in yourself and believe in the magic that is around you. We also have passion and pleasure, savor your life. I love this card. This card has come out a couple of different times. And, you know, I think it's really spirit's way of reminding us to find joy in the here and the now. And we quite often do think about, you know, setting intentions, manifesting things in, letting things go from the past. And, you know, um, you know, we look forward, make plans for the future. But, you know, how often do we actually stay for the moment, enjoy the here and the now? And that's a huge message that spirit's trying to get out. And we can find joy in the simplest things in life. And, you know, in this day and age of social media, of instant gratification, of, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, which is probably a facade anyway, um, you know, sometimes we forget, all right, to enjoy that here and now. And we forget to find that pleasure, even in just the smallest of things. I mean, if you look at these people on these this card, they've got like a caravan, right? You know, so like, a, you know, a trailer or a caravan or a motorhome or whatever you want to call it, right? They don't have anything really fancy. They've got this thing that they live in there. They got a bonfire. They've got people around them and they are just living it up by the light of the full moon, by the way. All right. And they're just enjoying themselves, right? And you don't need a lot of money or a lot of possessions to be happy. We're taught that we do, but we don't. Sure, we need a roof over our head and, you know, food on the table and anything else over and above that is pretty much just gravy. All right, so that's that reminder to live in the here and now, to savor the moment, all right, to be thankful and grateful for everything that you have, even be thankful and grateful for things that have not gone your way because they're the building blocks of life. But this is a reminder to follow your passion, right? What lights that fire in your soul? What do you love to do? What gives you pleasure, all right? And, you know, you may um, be looking for some big changes, okay? Is there like a passion project that you're looking to do, okay, or complete or get off the ground? Um, is there a hobby that you want to take up? Now is that time. So let's see what else we've got for you guys. We have the devil card coming out. We've got the seven of pentacles, the page of wands, advice from spirit is the king of swords. Yes, I see you, you devil, you get out. And blessings headed your way. We've got the justice card. All right, beautiful. And the energy at the bottom of the deck influencing your situation, influencing your week ahead. All right, it's the underlying energy, if you will, is the seven of swords. Now, first and foremost, the seven of swords can be that mental journey within you, trying to get your thoughts together, trying to figure something out. I'm trying to figure out what you want. All right, where have I been? What do I want now? Where do I want to go? It can certainly be about getting those thoughts in alignment. It can also be about you trying, actively trying to stay positive about a situation as well. All right. Out with the old way of thinking. Okay. And only trying to keep the positive thoughts. 
The Seven of Swords can also represent an underlying energy where you're done pleasing other people. All right. And instead of being on a people pleasing journey, you're going finally going to take action or do something that is for you and something that is your goals, your dreams. All right. No more of no more of this living your life for other people. All right. So you may find yourself in a situation at the moment where you can't be authentic and you can't be yourself. And so the seven of swords can bring in that energy of no. I'm done. I'm not going to compromise anymore. This is my values. This is what I want. And I'm not going to live my life to please someone else anymore. But the seven of swords can also represent dishonesty, lies, deceit, betrayal. Now, sometimes we lie to ourselves. All right. And sometimes we need to get real with ourselves. But there may also be a situation that you've been dealing with that uh, is probably ongoing when we get the Seven of Swords, all right, especially if it's like an underlying influence. So it could be something that's been going on for a while, okay, but it could also be something that you haven't quite realized yet, all right, someone doing something naughty, naughty behind your back, all right, but it may come to light in the week ahead. All right. So we do have the Devil card coming out. So some of you are e dealing with a... Uh, possibly dealing with a toxic workplace situation, uh, maybe even a toxic person in your life. All right. And the devil card comes out as something of a challenge. Okay. And there's that seven of swords. Are you feeling as though someone is not operating in your best interests? Are you operating in your best interests? Right. Because the devil card doesn't always represent a person. Okay. It's Capricorn energy. All right. It doesn't always represent a person. It can represent an aspect of you. First and foremost, the devil card is our shadow side of ourself. And if you think back to those um, old uh, those old cartoons like Looney Tunes, right? You ever watch those on a Saturday morning? I'm probably dating myself now. Um, my dad used to sit there and watch them. He used the excuse that we did. But you know those cartoons and you have the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other, right? And the angel is like, no, take the high road, right? No, don't get involved, right? Don't do that. And then the devil's like, yeah, come on, it'll be fun. All right, it'll be fun. It'll be great, right? And so the devil card itself represents kind of that devil on your shoulder, okay? And convincing you to do something or keep doing something or, you know, something that, you know, sure, it might be... Um, um, it might be fun, okay, but we go down a rabbit hole. We go take something to the extreme, take something to the excess because the devil card can represent obsession, addiction, um, holding on to something, um, operating maybe you are being a little bit underhanded, okay? It might be something that you need to do to survive, okay? But there can be, it brings in some dishonesty, right? And we see that with the Seven of Swords there also. So that may be an aspect of yourself. So maybe you're trying to make better choices because we have the Seven of Pentacles bringing in some introspection and we have the eight, the Page of Wands bringing in new, fresh energy, taking the steps forward. So you may be on a personal journey this week trying to make better choices with that double card, okay? Trying to detach from something that has taken a hold of you that isn't necessarily healthy. So you may, with the Page of Wands, you may be something simple as you might be embarking on a, um, uh, how shall we say, making improvements in your um, with your personal self, like uh, taking up an exercise regime, eating better, things like that. Okay, but you might just be making better choices of any kind. But the devil card can also represent that situation that has taken hold of you and you're trying to break free. The page of wands shows me that you're trying to break free. The king of swords brings in the ability to detach. All right, so this could be a past situation that you're trying to move forward from. Okay, um, but this can also be a really big heads up, especially with, you know, you've got two cards there that will show the full moon. All right. And the devil card can show up as a reminder from spirit that you, if you are on a manifestation journey, okay, you may be really, really, really obsessed. 
okay, with that, um, with your manifestations. Why aren't they coming out? Why aren't they doing this? Why don't I have this yet? And you may be going down a little bit of a rabbit hole of obsession and negativity there, okay? And what happens when you do that is you actually block the flow of energy. So that's why the devil card is coming out here is that little bit of a heads up that you do need to take that step back. You do need to detach and surrender your manifestations to spirit. And then we need to go about our day with a hop, skip and a jump like the page of wands and just trust that things are going to happen when they're meant to happen and be ready and open to take, um, take, uh, um, seize an opportunity. All right. When it does present itself. Okay. So there is certainly an element that's needing to detach from that. But again, some of you are in a situation right now that is not you with that devil energy, but it's not a healthy situation. So you're weighing up your options. The seven of pentacles has you really evaluating your current circumstance. All right. And has you looking at things about where, where have I come from? How far have I, you know, come on this journey or this project or this career path or with this relationship or even a personal journey? And when we have the seven of pentacles, it brings in this quiet, calm contemplation, but it also brings in some patience. All right. But it does bring in this element of evaluation and possibly, you know, a course correction, right? We always have a course correction. So the seven of pentacles, you're thinking about something, okay, am I on the right track? Am I on the right path? Is there still opportunity here where I currently am? Or is it time to cut and run? Is it time to do something a little bit different? Do I cut my losses and hightail it out of dodge? All right. Um, but the seven of pentacles is actually quite a positive energy. Okay. Because sometimes, you know, we do need to stop and smell the roses. Okay. We do need to stop and appreciate our current circumstances as well. There's that passion and pleasure. All right. And the seven of pentacles kind of brings us back to earth a little bit and, um, you know, has us kind of, you know, looking at our situation and, and, you know, kind of, being a little bit grateful for it, even if there's something that has kind of turned negative, we can still appreciate how far we've come. All right. We can appreciate those aspects of ourselves. All right. But the seven of pentacles as well, if you're trying to make better choices with this devil card, there may be some aspect of you that has taken you taken over your life a little bit. Okay. A little bit of an addiction there. We can get addicted to pretty much anything. Okay. Addicted to food, addicted to alcohol, right? Um, we can get addicted to people. We can become codependent, right? So that seven of pentacles shows you kind of making a plan. We've got the page of wands here as well, bringing in some excitement, some adventure, maybe some inspiration into your situation. Okay, the page of wands brings in this element of activity, of moving forward, of, you know, a hop, skip and a jump, right? It brings in this wonderful, vibrant energy. So, you know, um, if you're, you know, if you're trying to leave a situation, right, these cards here, you're certainly making some better choices. Okay, or you've made some decision and it brings in this element of I can do it. All right, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. The page of wands also sometimes brings in some good news. So you may have some good news um, that's coming in there throughout the week. And it may, it may actually be a trip or a journey of some sort. All right, but it could also just be your personal journey. All right, but you may have uh, some news coming in there. Maybe you've, um, you know, gotten a new job. All right. It can be something that comes in from a friend. Okay. But certainly something really positive that lightens your load a little bit that really puts that pep in your step. But the page of wands brings in a little bit of activity as well. So I don't know why I'm getting that someone is putting together an exercise regime and eating healthier and making better choices there. I mean, the devil card is there, so it's a little bit obvious, but uh, I think it mostly has to do with that page of wands. So if you are starting out um, on this personal um, you know, setting out to, uh, you know, follow your personal goals that you're putting in place. Good for you. All right. That's not easy to do. Right. And, you know, uh, people talk about new year's resolutions and things like that. They always fail, right? All the new year's resolutions fail. Most of the time people do them when they're in kind of an interesting, weird energy. And, um, but it's the ones that we tend to start throughout the year that tend to stick a little bit. All right. And, uh, you know, so this may be something that really sticks because it does have that element of excitement and that I can do it kind of energy. All right. So uh, very interesting. But 
your advice from spirit. We've got the king of swords. Be honest. Be truthful. Okay, be true to yourself first and foremost. All right, and that's part of that message with that seven of swords. All right, honesty will rule the day. Trust your intuition as well. The king of swords is incredibly intuitive energy. What does your gut tell you? All right, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, smells like a duck. It's got to be a duck, right? The devil energy can represent a situation or a person in your life. And maybe you think that somebody um, is being a little bit underhanded, especially with that seven of swords there. What does your intuition tell you? Okay, trust it. Evaluate your circumstances there with that seven of pentacles and make your own decision. The king of swords brings in the logic logical way of thinking okay it also brings in the ability to find the answers that you're looking for all right but it also it brings in also the clarity and sense of purpose that maybe you're looking for all right so if you've had some questions or you're haven't been sure the king of swords brings in that certainty to your situation but we can use that sword with the king of swords as the sword of justice the sword of truth the sword that can even help us to detach from negative situations, people, um, negative uh, behaviors and patterns as well, all right? And we can do that by being honest and truthful, by doing something that's for ourselves, by putting up boundaries even where we need to. Sometimes we can't physically leave a situation, but we can certainly put up boundaries, all right? And that King of Swords will help you do that. All right. So trust yourself, trust your intuition. All right. Find the, find the, if you need to research something, research seven of pentacles gives you that ability to research. All right. And then take the lead and then take charge. All right. Because we do have the justice card coming out here also. Now justice represents karma. The devil card can sometimes represent a karmic situation. So perhaps there is a relationship that you have that you've been either trying to detach from, from your past or something that you're working through in your present moment. All right. And the justice card comes out here to give a healthy dose of good karma to you. All right. To show you that you have the ability to work through something. You have the ability to um, put something to rest and even detach from something. The justice card also holds the sword of truth, justice. Okay. Um, the hand of fate intervenes in your situation. Okay. So you've got some really wonderful energy that is working for you. Right. And we do have this justice energy, right? We can sometimes think of those swords of honesty and truth. Yes. But also that justice. Okay. Justice is served. All right. And you know, but the justice card brings in solutions, brings in truths, revelations, all right, and also brings in balance to your situation as well. Now, in this particular deck, the Justice card is number 11. Some decks you'll see it as number 8, sometimes number 11. It goes back to the original numbering, but this one is number 11. That shows that you may actually be meeting somebody, King of Swords possibly, all right, who can raise your vibration, okay, who can help you on a spiritual journey, some spiritual growth if that's what you've got going on and trying to detach from something from your past, right? Your path to healing and personal growth. All right. But the justice, justice card can also bring in new beginnings. Okay. Some divine guidance as well. So trust your intuition. Okay. Because there's solutions that are, um, unfolding for you. Okay. And that's what that justice card brings in. It's like, oh yeah, Mr. Devil, you're going to show up. Well, I'll one up you with the justice card. All right, so this can certainly help you from detaching. Now, the justice card can also represent legal situations, contracts, things like that. Okay, so all positive for you because this is a blessing. Okay, so very positive for you, maybe not so much for someone else. So if you've got like a divorce or something or a custody battle, especially with the pages can represent children. So maybe you've got a custody battle that's been going on. There may be an offer that comes in on the table and you only need to evaluate it and think about if this is what you want. The King of Swords shows that there may be somebody uh, in your life that can give you some really good advice. Okay, should I take it? Should I not take it? All right, do we just deal with it and move forward. Okay. So you may be getting some advice there as well. All right. But there's certainly something very positive for you. Some resolutions, maybe even a new job. Okay. The page of wands, uh, that can represent a new job coming in for you, right? Something that you've been really hoping for, right? Cause maybe the justice card can represent a job offer. 
right? Um, job contract, right? An offer letter. Okay. So, um, always of course, trust your intuition and always of course, read the fine print in anything that you sign. Okay. And the seven of, uh, seven of pentacles gives you the eval uh, ability to evaluate something. Okay. in a very fair balanced and positive way with that justice card. Okay. So justice card brings in decisions as well. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I'm going to close out your reading with a Moonology card here since we do have the moon coming in. And there we go. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. All right. There's, so there's an energy of balance. This is full moon and Pisces energy, but full moon energy, okay? It's your time to detach from things that are soul sucking, detach from things that aren't healthy for you whether it's situations, people, patterns, or behaviors, all right? If you're on a spiritual journey, remember to take a practical approach as well, okay? You can't always be up in the air with the fairies, all right? And even though it's a wonderful place to be, we are human, okay? We do need to, you know, have our human um, aspects and our human world as well there, all right? But ultimately, there is balanced energy that's coming in here for you with this and with the Justice card also, so I'm going to leave that, but I hope there was something in this reading that resonated in some way. If there was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.